Hi everyone, it's Danielle with North Lawn Flower Farms. Today I want to talk about how to support your flowers and specifically how to do a method called corralling, which is also known as a post and string method of supporting our flowers. So what I've already done is I've taken four feet T-posts and pounded them into the ground so they're nice and secure at each corner of the bed. And if I was working with a much longer row, I would just be sure to go ahead and place these at least one every eight feet. So the principle is the same, no matter if you're working in a small bed like this or a long 50 or 100 feet row, just go ahead and put a sturdy stake into the ground every eight feet. Next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take something like twine or a wire mesh, depending on what kind of flower you're supporting, make sure to use a corresponding tool. You know, if you're working with dahlias, I would probably say go with the wire mesh, but twine will work absolutely fine for something like these Cosmos. These are double click Cosmos that I'm gonna go ahead and corral today. And all corralling is, is a support system so that when the rain and the wind and the storms come, which they always do, our plants don't fall all the way over into the ground and hence we lose that crop. So after we've pounded our stakes into the ground, I'm just going to take my twine and I'm going to put this, tie this really secure here to my first post. And I'm doing this about three feet above ground level. And then I'm going to take it over here to my next post. And the most important thing here is that I pull this as tight as possible so that we're not having you know a lot of movement on this twine. I'm gonna go ahead and wrap a couple times. And then I'm gonna go to my next post. You see basically we're giving our flowers a nice big hug with our twine. And I'll go to the next post. And as I say, if you had a much longer row, you would just have more posts and you would just continue in this fashion. We actually do have a really big storm coming through here, so I apologize if the light is really strange because it's about 1 p.m., which is not an ideal time to film, but I really needed to get this done. And then we're back to where we started here. I like the T-posts because they have these teeth and you can slip your twine into the teeth too for a little extra security. But certainly if you have a strong, uh, you know, wood post, use that. That's absolutely fine. All right. And now I can tie this off. Now, depending on what kind of flower I'm working with, I might need to add a, another layer higher up. And this is a double click Cosmo and I do ant anticipate it getting four and a half, maybe even five feet tall by the end of the season. So I'm going to go up another foot, do this process all over again. Hmm, doesn't want to go through this tooth. Now I like to use the corralling method with things like cosmos, chrysanthemums, um, dahlias, although as I say with dahlias I would definitely use a wire mesh instead of this twine that's not quite as strong. And then for things like zinnias, snapdragons, let's see, dara, definitely dara. I want to go ahead and net those things instead of corral them. So as I say, put that first one about three feet. This is a little too high up for what I'm looking for. That second one about one foot up from there. And we're just gonna do that all over again. 
I tell you what, it is a hot one here in Lancaster today. I think it's 95 and I'm sure I am sweating right now. You can probably see it. <laughs> and that's the way things really are around here. I'm usually sweaty and dirty and have no makeup on and a hat. <laughs> So I hope this is really helpful to see this done. You know, a lot of times you can read about things in books, but the reason why really I decided to start this whole channel about how I do things is because it's just so nice to um, see it done on film, I think, and to just feel more assured that you are doing it the right way. Because, you know, when I was starting out going from gardening, which I have been doing for you know, over a decade to flower farming, which is really totally different. I would read something and I would be like, is that really what I'm supposed to do? I've never seen that done in a garden before. <laughs> you know, it's just so different when you're going always for long stems, strong stems. These are the kind of things that we have to do. So pretty much done. And now the storms can roll on through and I don't have to worry about this row of double click cosmos. Well, I sure hope that was helpful. I hope you're getting out there into your garden, growing something beautiful. I'm sure you are. And until next time, happy gardening. Bye.